Okay, the first thing we're going to do now, if we take a look at our application, well, it's looking a bit bare. I'm just down to a single user now, and we've just got our title in place here. So what we're going to do is take a look at introducing more components to add to our user interface. And what we're going to start off with is creating a navbar component. Now, when it comes to creating components, what we're going to use is the Angular command line interface. So I'm just going to clear the terminal window inside here and create a bit of space. And what we want to do here is take a look at the ng generate command. And we can use ngg to get access to this. And if we get the contextual help for what we can use this for and use dash h and press return, then this will give us a list of things that we can do with this generate command. And we've got the list of all the different type of Angular related things that we can create with this utility. And one of the things we can create is a component. So that's what we'll go ahead and do. Now what we'll do is we'll say ngg and we can shortcut component. It's got an alias of the C, which means we're going to create a component if we just use C. And then we give the component a name and I'm just going to give it a, a name of nav. And before we do this, actually, I'm just going to change directory into the source and the app folder because this is where we want our components to be created, not at the project level. We want to go down into our app folder. So then I'm going to say nggc and we'll call it nav. And by default, Angular is going to create a test file for us. Now, testing is great, but as I mentioned, it's not the focus of this particular training course. And what we're going to do to prevent the test file being created, which will just add an extra file in our solution that we're not really going to use, I'm going to use the option to skip tests here. And then we go ahead and press return. And what this does, it creates three files. It creates the component file with the extension TS. It creates the template file with the extension HTML, and it creates the CSS file as well. And what it also does, it updates the app module to declare our component. So if we go and take a look and we open up the app module, what we'll find is that our nav component has been added to our declarations and we've got the import automatically added to our app module component. So by using the CLI, it saves us a bit of time. And what it's also done for us inside the app folder, we've got a nav folder with our component files inside there. So what we'll do is we want to have a nav bar in our application. So what we'll do to get started with this is we'll cheat a little bit and we'll go to bootstrap. So I'll just search for bootstrap in here and go to getbootstrap.com, what we'll do is we'll just take a look at some examples just to get a starting point of a navbar. And if we take a look inside here, we want a navbar with a form so that we can add the login there as well. And the carousel looks like a good option for this. So what we'll do is we'll just right click and inspect. And what we'll grab is the nav and everything inside the nav, what we'll do, we'll just copy the elements and we'll go back to VS Code and we're just going to paste this code inside our nav components template. And then what we'll do, if we open up our navbar components.ts, this tells us what selector we need to use to add it to another component. And in this case, everything is prefixed with app. So we use app nav to be able to add it to our component. So we're going to add this to our app components template. And what we'll do is we'll replace this title. We're not going to use that anymore. And when it comes to adding Angular components to another component, then what we can do is open the left angle bracket, start typing. And what we should see is the components that are available for us to import when we just start typing app. And then we can just select it using enter. And when we enter the closing bracket, it should automatically complete the closing element here. So we've got our app nav. And what we should see, if we go back to our browser and go to our application, we can now see that we've got the nav bar showing on our page. We seem to have 
lost our user, but our user's hidden underneath this navbar now. But don't worry about that, we're going to sort all of this out. So let's go back and make some changes to our nav component. And what we want to do is bring the title inside rather than having it on the edges. And what we can use for that is a bootstrap container. So I'm just going to say div dot container. And this is known as an Emmet abbreviation. When we start typing like this, we give it the name of the element we want to add, then give it any classes that we want to apply. And then we should be able to just press tab to go ahead and create a div tag and also give it the class of container. And then what we'll do is copy all of this or we'll cut from the A with the navbar brand all the way down to the div just before the end of the navbar and we'll paste it inside our container. And if we go and take a look, what we should find is that the login form and the nav links have been moved inside from the edge of the navbar here. So what we'll also do is give our navbar our title of our app and very simply we're just going to keep it as dating app. Call it whatever you want. This is just what I'm going with for the demonstrations. Now just to get something completely clear straight away and set expectations appropriately, we're going to cover a lot about a lot in this course but we're not going to cover everything about everything. Sacrifices have to be made so that we can maintain focus on the learning goals of this course. And the learning goals is to create a desktop application using .NET Core as the API and Angular as the front end. What this course is not, is not a web design course. That's beyond the scope of what I'm capable of, of teaching. So we will make our application look good on a desktop, but what we won't do is focus on making it responsive or making it perfect for a mobile device. So what we'll do is we'll take out this responsive element here, this navbar toggler. This is designed for when a user resizes their screen, then it will change the links into a, a hamburger icon. But we're going to remove that and not focus on responsive elements inside here. So we'll also take out this div for the navbar collapse and take out the corresponding div below the form tag here as well. And then we can just use the shortcut keys to reformat the code inside here. Now we'll make a, a few other changes inside here. We'll take off this hard-coded active link, which makes the home link active at the moment. We won't need that, so we'll remove that. And we'll also remove this span as well, as we don't need that either. And we'll also remove the disabled from in here and the area and tab index from there as well. So we've just got three simple nav links. We're going to keep everything as simple as possible for as long as possible. And what we'll do is we'll just create three different links for our application. We'll say the first link is matches, the second link is lists, and the third link is messages. And then what we'll also do is take a look at the form and we'll remove the label the ARIA label. We don't need that for what we're doing. And we'll change the search to say login. And we'll change the placeholder here to say username. And what we'll do is we'll just copy this line down. And in my case, it's shift option and the down arrow key to copy a line down to the next row. And the second one we'll say is the password. And we'll also give the type a type of password for the password. And if we go and take a look at how we're doing now, we can see that we've got our links showing up on here along with the title of our app and we've got a form to allow the users to log in here as well. But we're still missing the content inside our, our single user that we're displaying. We've kind of lost our user and that's because we're using a fixed top for the navbar. The fixed top class doesn't provide any padding or margins for us. We need to do that ourselves. So what we'll do, we'll head back to VS Code, we'll head to our app components, and what we'll do is we'll wrap the content inside a container, and we'll cut and paste our unordered list and put it inside there. And what we'll also do is just add some style here, and we'll just say margin-top, and we'll set this to 100 pixels. And if we go take a look, what we should find is that Bob is now visible on our page once again.
So what we'll do next is we'll take a look at this form and introduce Angular template forms into our application.